Today I am going to deliver a lecture on vector spaces. The paper title is Introduction to Algebra and Matrix Analysis. In the very first lecture, we discuss about some basic terminology of group theory, then abelian group, and the next one is permutation group, subgroup, normal subgroup. In lecture 5, we discuss V. In lecture 6, we discuss vector space part 1. Now we discuss in lecture number 7 of vector spaces uh, part 2nd. This is definition of uh, linear transformation. Let us consider two vector spaces. One is uf and the other vector space is vf. Let uf and vf be two vector spaces over the same field capital F. A mapping or a function which made from u to v is a function such that when we operate t over an a alpha plus b beta, it produces a of t alpha plus b of t beta. For every alpha and beta, two arbitrary vectors which belongs to u, and for any two scalar a and b which belongs to field F. Any function which possesses this property is called linear transformation from one vector space uf to another vector space vf. The next definition is linear operator. If we consider a vector space vf over the field F, and there is a mapping T which is from V to V. Let V F be a vector space over the field F and a linear operator from a V to V is a function T from V to V such that when we operate t over a alpha plus b beta, it produces a t of alpha plus b t of beta. For every alpha beta which belongs to v, and for every a and b, or any scalar quantity which belongs to our field. So basically, linear operator is a particular case of linear transformation because in case of linear transformation, we are mapping from one vector space to another vector space, like from vector space u f to vector space v f. In case of linear operator, we have a mapping from a vector space to itself. Means in this case, in linear operator case, our T mapped from V to V instead of U to V. Let T be a linear transformation from a vector space UF into a vector space VF, then T of 0 is equal to ball 0. This ball 0 is basically a 0 vector which belongs to V while ordinary 0 is 0 vector of U. Here we have two vector spaces UF and VF. F is filled. T is a linear transformation which made from vector space U into vector space V. Let the 0 belongs to U is the 0 vector of vector space UF and 0 bar is the 0 element or a 0 vector of vector space Vf. So when we operate a linear transformation T over a 0 vector of 1 vector space Uf, it may made over a, a 0 vector of another vector space Vf. If you operate T over negative of any vector minus of alpha, it produces minus of T alpha. If you consider any vector alpha which belongs to u, then definitely t alpha belongs to v. So t of minus alpha will be minus of t alpha. So t alpha belongs to v, while alpha is any arbitrary vector of u. And minus alpha also belongs to u because we form an abelian group for additive operation. So for every vector v alpha, there exists a minus alpha in u. Next property is t over alpha minus beta is equal to t alpha minus t beta. 
for every alpha beta belongs to u. Suppose we have some another vector beta in u, then for every alpha beta belongs to u, we have t of alpha minus beta is equal to t alpha minus t beta. Now discuss a problem show that the function t which made from a vector space of three dimension v3r to another vector space v2r. Here v3r represents a vector space over the field of real numbers r and the subscript 3 represents the dimension of our vector space vr. v2r is a two dimensional vector space over the set of real numbers, the field of real numbers and which is defined t of a comma b comma c means when we operate mapping t over the three dimensional vector a comma b comma c it produces a comma b for every abc belongs to r here abc are any arbitrary vectors which belongs to r and is a linear transformation from v3r to v2r so here we have to prove this mapping t which is made from a vector space v3r to V2R is a linear transformation. And according to the definition of linear transformation, we know that in order to prove a function is a linear transformation, we first choose two arbitrary vectors. Let us consider alpha and beta, or any two arbitrary vectors which belongs to our three dimensional vector space V3R. First vector alpha consists of three scalars. A1, B1, and C1. These A1, B1, C1 belongs to our field because vector consists of scalars A1, B1, C1. The next vector beta is again consists of three scalars A2, B2, and C2. And again A2, B2, and C2 are member of our uh, field which is R, capital R. Here our field is uh, field of real numbers. So A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, all are members of R. And if we choose two arbitrary scalars, let us consider A and B, or uh, any two arbitrary chosen scalars from R. In order to prove T is a linear transformation, first of all we operate T over the A alpha plus B beta. And if T of A alpha plus B beta is equal to A of T alpha plus B of T beta, then we can do yes T form a linear transformation. Now, now we operate T over A alpha plus B beta, where A alpha and B beta are members of three-dimensional vector space V3R. We simply assign the value of our two vectors alpha and beta because we assume our alpha is a1 comma b1 comma c1 is a three-dimensional vector. Again, beta is beta a2 comma b2 comma c2 is another vector, and we know that uh, scalar multiplication to vectors. So we just simply multiply this scalar to our ordinates of vector in a a1, then a b1 and a c1. We just simply introduce a scalar inside the vector. Similarly, we multiply b to the vector beta in beta a, b a2, b b2 and b c2. Finally, these are the two different vectors and according to the addition of vector, when we add them, we get one resulting vector which is again a three dimensional vector and which consists of a a1 plus b a2. This is first ordinate of resulting vector. a b1 plus b b2. This is the second ordinate of our resulting vector. And the third ordinate consists of a c1 and b c2. This is the third ordinate of our vector. So, this is t of a a1 plus b a2 comma a b1 plus b b2 comma a c1 plus b c2. And according to the definition of T. According to the question, when we operate T over A comma B comma C, the resulting vector is just A comma B because 
This is two dimensional vector space. So each member consists of two scalars, a comma b. So according to the definition of t, we have t of a comma b comma c is equal to a comma b. So we apply the same uh, property of t over this factor. So our desired resulting two dimensional vector will be a a one plus b a two. Just first argument and second argument. The third argument becomes removed because our definition is t of a comma b comma c is equal to a comma b. So from here we compute our two dimensional vector as a a one plus b a two and comma a b one plus b b two. Further, we can easily split this one vector into two vector because if we add these two vector, the coming uh, vector will be this one. So we can easily split this one vector into two different as a sum of two different factors: a a one comma a b one plus b a two comma b b two. And finally, because we observe here that this a is common, so by taking a as a common from the first vector and from the second vector, we choose b as a common. So finally. This a1 b1 can be replaced with t of a1 b1 c1. This is all due to the uh, given definition of uh, linear transformation t. Because for t of a1 b1 c1, we have a1 comma b1. This is according to the given definition of t. So we can easily write a1 comma b1 a two-dimensional vector as t of a1 comma b1 comma c1. So instead of a1 b1, we write t of a1 b1 c1, and similarly for a2 b2, we have same. We use the same definition again for two-dimensional vector a2 b2. We have t of a a2 comma b2 comma c2, and from here we conclude that this is alpha and this is beta. So finally, we get a times of t alpha plus b times of t beta, and which is the desired condition for Linear transformation because we operate t over a sum of two vectors a alpha plus b beta, and we get a of t alpha plus b of t beta, and that's why this t is a linear transformation from three-dimensional vector space b three r to a two-dimensional vector space b two r because t satisfies the desired condition for linear transformation. Now we discuss some important transformation. The very first transformation is zero transformation. Let us consider a two-vector space. One is uh, uf and the other one is vf. Over the same field. So this is your vector space uf and this is vector space vf. Over the same field f. The function t, which is from u into v. Here we consider a function t, which is made from one vector space u to another vector space v, such that if you operate t over any arbitrary vector for every alpha which belongs to vector space u, the resulting quantity is always zero bar. And here, the zero bar is the zero vector of our vector space v. So, a mapping t such that when we operate t over any arbitrary vector of vector space u, it results in in a zero vector, zero bar, and this shows this zero bar that this t is a zero transformation. The next definition is identity operator. Of identity operator, we have just one vector space. Let V of be a vector space over the field F, and there's a mapping I, which is from V to V. So this mapping I made from V into V. So V of is a vector space over the field F, and I is a mapping which is made from V to V, such that for every arbitrarily chosen vector alpha for every alpha vector which belongs to our vector space v 
I of alpha produced alpha. If you choose another arbitrary vector, suppose let us consider a beta vector belongs to B, then definitely I of beta gives us beta. I of x gives us x. And this type of transformation, this type of operator I is called identity operator because it resultantly gives you the same vector over which the operator may be. Range of a linear transformation. Let us consider a vector space UF. Another, another vector space VF over the same field F. And here we consider T as a linear transformation. So this T is a linear transformation which moved from one vector space UF to another vector space VF. Then the range of t is nothing, it's just an image set of u. If you choose any arbitrary vector alpha which belongs to u, then t of alpha, this t of alpha is denoted by suppose some vector beta. So this t alpha is a member of vector space field. So our range of t, which is usually denoted by r of t, and this r of t consists of all t alpha type of uh, members of V which is basically an image of any arbitrary vector which belongs to U. So let T be a linear transformation from vector space UF into vector space VF then the range of T written as R of T is a set of all vectors beta and V such that beta is T of some alpha where alpha belongs to U for some alpha in U. Thus the range of T is the image set of U under linear transformation T. The next one is uh, null space of linear transformation. Let T be a linear transformation from vector space UF into a vector space VF. Then null space of T is usually written as N of T. Is the set of all vectors alpha which belongs to U, which made all of the identity vector or a zero vector of V. All such elements of U, for example, alpha belongs to U, T of alpha is equal to zero bar, where zero bar is the zero vector of V. So all those vectors of vector space U, which built over the identity or a zero vector of second vector space V, is, the, is known as null space of T. And there is a remark R of T and N of T are some spaces of V and U respectively. Means R of T and N of T always form a vector space for U or subspace for V and U. Now we come to the definition of uh, rank of linear transformation. The dimension of range space, see range space is a subset of vector space we have, RT. RT contained in VF while NT, which is a null space, is a subset of vector space U. Because NT consists of all those vectors of U which made over the zero vector of second vector space VF. While RT is the just image set of U under the linear transformation T. So NT is a non empty subset of U, while RT is a non empty subset of VF. And both RT and NT form a subspaces for vector space V and U. The dimension of range space RT, dimension of range space RT means uh, basis for RT versus the number of element is equal to the dimension of range of space, the range space of linear transformation. So dimension of range space of a linear transformation T is known as rank of T. While the dimension of null space, dimension of NT, because NT being a subspace, it itself form a vector space and we know that every vector space always possesses a basis. 
and number of element in the basis decide the dimension of our vector space. So this NP must possess a basis and number of element in the basis of NT gives the dimension of null space and which is denoted by uh, nu. This nu is the notation for nullity. And for dimension of range of t, we have notation rho, which is ren. So ren means dimension of range space and nullity means the dimension of null space. Now, this is very important theorem which is uh, known as Sylvester's law of nullity. According to this law, let us consider a two vector space uf and vf and t is a linear transformation which is made from one vector space u to another vector space v and if u is finite dimensional vector space this is most that u must be a finite dimensional vector space then the dimension of u is equal to dimension of rt which is uh, rank of t and plus dimension of nt dimension of nt means nullity nullity of t which gives us the dimension of null space so this is universal dimension of vector space u is always equal to the rank of t plus nullity of t this is according to Sylvester's law of nullity Now we discuss few problems based on uh, vector surface spaces. The first problem is show that the set W of ordered triads A1, A2, comma zero where A1, A2 belongs to F is a subspace of V3. Here we show that the set W of all ordered triads which consists of scalars like A1, A2 which belongs to field F is a subspace of B3F for this if we consider a vector space three dimensional vector space B3F over the field F in order to prove any subset W of vector, three dimensional vector space V3F is not, there is a condition or a criteria for subspace. The necessary and sufficient condition for any non empty subset to be a vector subspace is that for any two arbitrary vector alpha and beta which belongs to this non empty set W and two arbitrary scalars A and B which belongs to our field F. As we know that the necessary and sufficient condition for any non empty subset of vector space to be a subspace. is that for any two arbitrary chosen alpha beta belongs to W for any, for any two scalar A B belongs to field A alpha plus B beta must belongs to W this is the desired condition for any non empty set to be a subspace of given vector space so in our case we have our subset W of V3F which consists of 
ordered tribe. See, this, these ordered tribes are very particular and specific three dimensional vectors whose third scalar is always zero. Because this V3F contains vectors like A comma B comma C because V3F is a three-dimensional vector space. So it's every vector consists of three scalars, A comma B comma C. Particularly all those vectors whose third scalar is zero, they belong to W. So this W is basically a specific collection of three-dimensional vectors, vectors whose third scalar is always zero. And in order to prove this W, construct a subspace of vector space Pf. First of all, we start with the assumption that let us consider two vectors alpha and beta belongs to W. And according to the question, clearly alpha consists of A1, A2, A0 because we have all triads, three dimensional uh, vectors or a triads of this specific form A1, A2, A0 belongs to W. If we choose another vector beta in W, definitely this beta will be B1, B2 and the third scalar is again 0. Alpha and beta are any two arbitrary vectors of W. Now we consider two scalars A and B which belongs to field F. A and B which belongs to field F. And A and B are clearly scalar quantities because it belongs to F. Now, A alpha plus B beta. We start with this assumption that A alpha is A alpha plus B beta is equal to A. Instead of alpha, we assume a vector like A1, comma, A2, 0 plus Instead of beta, we have factor like b1, comma, b2, comma, 0. And we know how to multiply a scalar to the vector, so we just introduce a inside the vector a a1, a a2, and a into 0 gives us 0. Plus b b1 plus sorry b b2 comma 0 and finally we add them a a1 comma a2 comma 0 and b b1 b b2 comma 0 are two different factors and according to the addition of factor a a1 plus b b1 comma a a2 plus B, B, B. This is the procedure for addition of two vectors. In order to add two vectors, we first take first ordinate of first vector and we add with the first ordinate of second vector. And similarly, second element of first vector with the second element of second vector. And so on. And clearly, this A, A1 plus B, B1, comma, A, A2 plus B, B2, comma, 0, from here we conclude that this is again a three dimensional vector whose third ordinate is zero scalar. And this particular type of scalars whose third position vector, uh, third position element is scalar zero always belongs to W. And these two scalars quantity because A1, B1, A2, B2 and A and B, all six are scalar quantities which belongs to F. And because F is a field, and according to the definition of field, F always constructs an abelian group for additive operation as well as uh, additive uh, multiplicative group for uh, abelian group for multiplicative operation. And it also possesses a distributive loss. So if A and A1 are two distinct scalars belongs to F, then definitely their product A into A1 belongs to F. Similarly, B and B1 are two distinct scalars belongs to field. So their product B into B1 again belongs to F because F is close for uh, scalar multiplication. And finally, A A1 and B B1 are two scalar quantity which belongs to F. And we know that this field F is also close for vector uh, scalar addition also because F constructed a abelian group for additive operation. 
So A A one plus B B one is member of A A one plus B B one is a member of F. Similarly, A A two plus B B two is again a member of F because F is closed for additive operation as as well as for multiplicative operation. So these two members, these two scalars belongs to F, and the third position that is a position element is zero scalar. That's why this belongs to W. So clearly, A alpha plus B beta is equal to this order triad, and this type of order triad belongs to W. So we start with the assumption that two alpha and beta are two arbitrary vectors belongs to W, and A and B are any two scalars belongs to field F. And finally, we conclude A alpha plus B beta belongs to W. Hence, W form a subspace for B three F. This is three dimensional vector space. The next question is if a1, a2, a3 are fixed elements of a field F, then the set W of all ordered triads of the form x1, x2, x3 of elements of F such that a1, x1 plus a2, x2 plus a3, x3 is equal to zero is a subspace of V3F. So if a1, a2, a3 are Fix the elements of field F. Then the set W of all ordered triads x1, comma x2, comma x3 of elements of Elements of F such that such that a one x one plus a two x two plus a three x three is equal to zero is a subspace of V three F. Again, we consider a vector space which which is three-dimensional vector space V three F over the field F. A one, A two, and A three. These are the three fixed integers, the so fixed scalar quantities. A one, A two, and A three are three fixed scalars. And let us consider the set W, which is a subset of V three F. And this W consists of scale of vectors like x1, comma x2, comma x3, where x1, x2, and x3 are again scalar quantities which belongs to our field F. And according to this question, this W consists of all three-dimensional vectors in which scalars like x1, x2, x3. When we put with a linear combination with fixed scalars a1, a2, a3, they produce zero. So such specific three-dimensional vectors of W, which shows linear combination with three fixed scalars a1, a2, a3, is equal to zero. They belongs to W. So we know that. Is it necessary and sufficient condition for any non-empty subset to be a subspace or vector space? And it is that for 
any two arbitrary chosen factor alpha beta which belongs to W and A and B which belongs to field F this implies if A alpha plus B beta again belongs to W then W form a subspace of vector space B3F so let us consider two vectors alpha and beta which belongs to W and according to question we choose our vector alpha which belongs to W as x1 comma x2 comma x3 and if we choose another vector beta which belongs to set W as y1 comma y2 comma y3 this is another vector in W so according to question if we choose alpha which consists of 3 scalar x1, x2, x3 and if alpha belongs to W then definitely alpha satisfies this criteria it means a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3 gives us 0 according to our condition the same condition we apply about beta also because beta is again belongs to W so a1 y1 a2 y2 plus a3 y3 gives us 0 because a1 a2 a3 are fixed scalars belong to field and x1 x2 x3 y1 y2 y3 are arbitrarily chosen scalar from field f such that they fulfill this criteria because alpha and beta belongs to w now let us consider two scalar a and b which belongs to field f suppose a and b are any arbitrarily chosen scalar quantity which belongs to field f now, now we start with the assumption a alpha plus b beta a alpha plus b beta for alpha we have x1 comma x2 comma x3 so we simply replace our alpha with factor x1 x2 x3 and similarly for beta we have y1 comma y2 comma y3 further we just multiply the scalar to the vector which, is, which gives us ax1 ax2 ax3 and by1 by2 and by3 and finally we add both, both the vectors ax1 comma ax2 comma ax3 with the second vector b y1 b y2 b y3 and which gives us ax1 plus b y1 comma ax2 plus b y2 comma ax3 plus b y2 this is just addition of two vectors we have two distinct vectors and we finally add them and we get the resulting vector as ax1 plus b y1 ax2 plus b y2 and ax3 plus b y3 now, now in order to show that this resulting vector which is a three dimensional vector again belongs to w we must show that the scalar like ax1 plus b y1, ax2 plus b y2 and ax3 plus b y3 must satisfy this criteria means when we find the linear combination with a1, a2, a3 these three scalar produce zero then only this particular vector again belongs to w and w construct a subspace so let us check whether they produce zero or not so first we take a first scalar ax1 plus b y1 multiply this scalar with a fixed scalar a1 of field f which is a1 the second scalar is a2 fixed scalar multiply this with the second scalar ax2 plus b y2 and third scalar a3 which is a fixed scalar belongs to field multiply with ax3 plus b y3 and further we simplify the expression just introduce a1 inside the bracket so a1 a x1 plus a1 b y1 plus a2 a x2 plus a2 b y2 
प्लस ए थ्री ए एक्स थ्री प्लस ए थ्री बी वाई थ्री विच आर सिंपली मल्टीप्लाई स्केल ए वन ए टू ए थ्री इन साइड द ब्रैकेट एंड फाइनली वी ऑब्जर्व दिस मच हेयर वी हैव सिक्स टर्म्स एंड आउट ऑफ सिक्स टर्म्स वील ऑब्जर्व दैट थ्री टर्म्स विच इंक्लूड्स ए so we choose a throughout as a common and finally we get a1 x1 a2 x2 and a3 x3 similarly we choose b as a common from the remaining three terms so b a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus a3 y3 and we know that This a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3 gives us zero according to our initial hypothesis because we assume a1 x1 plus a2 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 x2 plus a3 x3 produces zero because x1 comma x2 comma x3 is alpha and this alpha belongs to W so a to zero plus a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus a3 y3 is also zero because beta is again member of W. And every vector which belongs to W satisfies this criteria. So again, we get zero. So a to zero and b to zero gives us zero plus zero, and finally we conclude with zero. So yes, this particular vector, which consists of three scalars, where we multiply these three scalar with fixed three scalar a one, a two, a three, produces zero. Means it satisfies our given criteria. That's why this particular vector again belongs to W. And hence, this W construct a subspace because we start with the assumption alpha beta belongs to W, a b belongs to F, and finally we conclude this a alpha plus b beta member of W. Hence, W form a subspace of three-dimensional vector space V here. Thank you.